Hey guys, today I'm going to share with you how to make a traditional red pozole. So if you're ready, let's get started. Alright guys, so here I already have all of my ingredients. As always, they will be listed in the description box. So with that being said, let's begin cooking. Alright guys, so before you make this pozole, you want to make sure that you soak your dry hominy overnight. So here I already have my hominy ready. So it's already been soaking overnight. So once we have it ready, we can begin to making our pozole. All right, so now I'm just going to fill up my pot with six quarts of water. Okay, so once we have the water in our pot, we can take it to our stove. Okay, to my water, I'm going to be adding salt. We're going to set it on high heat and bring it to a boil. Okay, and once our water is ready, we're going to be adding our meat. So our pork shoulder goes in there. And I cut it into smaller pieces. Throw it all in there. Okay, we're also going to be adding our neck bones. And this is just for flavor. So just add them in. Okay, so now we're just going to wait for it to come to a second boil. And once it comes to a second boil, we're going to remove all of the foam form on top of our bra. So all right, so once we have removed all of the impurities from our broth, we're going to add our onion. Head of garlic, three bay leaves, and our uncooked hominy. Just mix it. We're going to reduce the heat to medium low. Cover it and allow it to cook for one hour and a half. All right guys, so after one hour and a half, this is what our pozole is starting to look like. At this point, we're going to get ready to make our sauce. Yeah, to make our sauce, we're going to begin by cleaning our chile pods. I love to use New Mexico chile pods just because we like our pozole to be a little on the spicy side. But of course, if you don't want it to be spicy, just use chile guajillos. Okay, so we're going to begin by removing the stem, emptying out the seeds. Now, if your hands are sensitive to chile, make sure that you wear gloves so like that your hands don't get irritated. So we just empty them out and we repeat with the rest of our chiles. And you want to do the same to the chile de ancho. Just remove the stem. And they're always a little harder, so just crack the top. And remove. And because our chiles are always dirty, we're going to give them a good rinse. Okay, and once our chiles are nice and clean, now we can get ready to cook them. Okay, so we're just going to place them on top of our broth and allow them to soften for about five minutes. Okay, and once our chiles have softened, we're going to transfer them to our blender cup. Okay, so now we're just going to grab some of the broth. So just add enough broth to cover the chiles. And here I'm also going to be removing the onion and the garlic. Unless you want to use it on your chile, you can do that. But I always like to use fresh. So now we can get ready to make our sauce. Okay, to blender cup, we're going to be adding our onion, garlic cloves, oregano, ground cumin, and chicken bouillon. And now we're just going to be blending until we have a smooth sauce. Alrighty, and once we have our sauce, we're going to get ready to fry it. Okay, so I'm going to grab my pan, set it on medium heat, add a little bit of oil, and allow it to heat up. Alrighty, and once hot, we're going to add our sauce. Strain if you need to. And it's okay for the mess. We can clean that after. Okay, so now we're just going to bring it to a simmer and just allow all of the flavors to come together. Alrighty, and once our sauce comes to a simmer, taste it for salt and see if you want to adjust it. For me, this is perfect, so we're going to reduce the heat to medium low and allow it to continue simmering for about 10 minutes. Now, this is your time. If you want to shred your meat, this is a perfect time to do so. Okay, so your meat should be nice and tender, so if you want to shred it, you're going to struggle. Okay, and after 10 minutes, our sauce is ready. So now we can get ready to transfer it to our pozole. Okay, so just be very careful and pour it. So we're just going to mix it all together. And let me tell you that this smells delicious already. Okay, so now we're just going to allow it to continue cooking for another 20 to 30 minutes. Alrighty guys, so after 30 minutes, our pozole should be done. Of course, just make sure the hominy is nice and soft. Okay. So we're just going to remove the bay leaves. And the hominy should be nice and soft, just like that. 
But just like that, we can get ready to serve our delicious pozole. Alrighty guys, so once we serve our pozole, we can now get ready for the fun part to top it. So I'm going to be topping it with some cabbage and cilantro. But first, let's squeeze a little lime juice. Going to be adding a little onion, some radish, and to spice it up, a chile de árbol. But just like that, we can get ready to serve and enjoy. And I like to enjoy it with some tostadas. Alrighty guys, and now for the best part, the taste test. Now let me tell you guys that I hope you give this recipe a try. It's so easy to make, and let me tell you that your whole house will be smelling super delicious. I am so ready, it's pozole season, everybody loves pozole. And of course, you know, I usually use the pre-cooked hominy, which is nothing wrong with that, but using the uh, dried hominy, it sure does make a difference on the way the broth tastes and just the whole, the whole recipe. You know, this is, takes me back to my grandma's recipe and it's just amazing. So I hope you give it a try and enjoy it just as much. So let's take a bite. It is hot. The meat is so tender though. I am ready. Mm. The unforgettable taste of my grandma's pozole. It's so good. Super delicious. And for me, the sauce, it's perfect. You know, it's a little spicy. You don't need to add no more chili. This right here, it's just everything. Mmm. Alrighty guys, and there you have it on how to make a super easy and delicious pozole rojo. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Share with your friends and family, and if you regret this recipe, please don't forget to tag me in any of my social medias. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button so you guys can be part of our family. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye.